I'm bringing you a special Halloween tutorial for the month of October. Today we're going to learn how to make a painted candy skull perfect for Halloween using graphics and a photograph. We're going to start out with this and we're going to end up with something that looks like this. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is the actual candy skull that I chose to create this with. I got it from FreePick, that's uh, FreePick.com, Free Photo Vector Sugar Skull is what I searched for and this is pretty much what you get. This is the one that I chose because I like the colors and the flowers and all of that. Uh, I did make a couple of changes to it because usually the girl candy skulls have this like Chelsea smile look that you see on this one right here. If we'll come down you'll see she also has that. Here's another one. So I wanted to get that same look for the one that we're going to be doing. So what I did was because this is a vector file, I went ahead and took it into Illustrator, removed this mouth area, and I just drew on my own Chelsea smile, just a line with a bunch of lines through it. Very simple. Of course, you can use any image to do this. So you don't have to um, make adjustments the way I did, but uh, I just wanted to show you just in case you wanted to recreate what I did. That's what I had to end up doing to get this. And of course you can always buy images that are exactly what you're looking for. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. I just wanted to show you that quickly. So you might be familiar with something like this if you've done a displacement type image before. I guess the only difference here is that it's a mask so you're having to fit it on her face based on her contours. Everyone has different contours to their face so you have to be really careful with how this is going to be placed around her eye area and around her mouth. We're going to go ahead and open up the original image. This is the original image. I got this from pixels.com. Uh, I just looked for face actually is what I searched to grab this and I'll, I'll go ahead and leave a link for that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open that and I'm going to unlock the layer and I'm coming over to the crop tool because I don't want the entire image. I just kind of, I just want to keep it maybe about there. Hit return and that's just going to crop everything out. Okay, so this is the image that we're going to be working with. Let me zoom in so we can see the entire image. I'm going to go ahead and make some duplicates of this. One of them, this one right here, we're just going to go ahead and leave down here and turn it off. That's our original. Uh, we don't want to mess with that. I'm going to turn this top one off and we're going to work with this one right here. We're going to add a black and white adjustment layer. We're going to come down here to the adjustments and choose black and white and change a few settings. That way our graphic will wrap around her face a little bit better. So I'm going to just bring this down to get a little bit of shadow and also bring down the yellows. I'm going to just grab both of those, Command E, Control E on the keyboard and I'm going to make that one. From here, I'm going to go over to filter, then blur, Gaussian blur, and blur the image somewhat. I'm going to blur it to about nine. Then I'm going to right click on this layer, duplicate the layer, and I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to name the file uh, contour. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'm just going to close out that contour. Yes, I do want to save it. I'll save it here and now I'm just going to delete this black and white layer because I don't need it here anymore. So I'm going to just click on delete and I'm going to work with this top layer right here. With this one what I'm going to do is remove the background. I'm going to come over to my quick selection tool and I'm just going to grab her as a selection. Okay once I have her I'm going to come up here to select and mask. And that's going to open up another dialog box. If you don't have uh, this red showing, uh, actually you don't need this. This is just what I prefer. Uh, there are other options here that you can use. I prefer to use the red. So that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, I'm going to click here on Smart Radius. And I'm going to bring this to one pixel. I don't want to take too much off. What I'm going to do is just remove this white from her hair and kind of around this area. Make sure you're here uh, in the Refine Edge Brush tool. That's the second one down. 
And then we're just going to go around her hair to remove some of this white from her hair. You're still going to have some white areas. Give it a minute. And then I'm going to come down here. Okay, so that's good enough for me. I'm going to choose an output of uh, layer mask and I'm going to click OK. So that's going to give us something like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another layer. This one's going to go underneath here and I'm going to do a gradient layer. I'm going to uh, take it from black to maybe like a lighter gray color, something like maybe there. And I'm going to use this gradient tool. Let me zoom out, go back in there, and I'm going to choose somewhere from the middle of the image and then just bring it out. When I zoom back in, you're going to see that we still have all of that white. So I'm going to choose this layer right here. I'm just going to apply this layer mask. And I'm going to come up to layer, matting, and remove the white matting. So it's just going to remove some of that white that we have around the edges. So once I have this layer, I can duplicate that option on the keyboard, Alt or Option on the keyboard, drag it up, and that's going to give you a duplicate of that layer. This layer, I'm going to go ahead and add another black and white adjustment layer. So come in here, choose black and white. And actually, let me back up a little bit. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to come here and make a few adjustments to this because I want this to be her face anyway to be as white as possible. So I'm going to come up to filter, camera raw, and just make a few adjustments to the image itself because her eye area, this is going to stay pretty uh, like a pink color and I don't want that. So I'm going to try to get this as white as I can. I'm going to take my temperature down, uh, take up my highlights, take my whites way up, bring down my blacks. I'm mainly just looking at the eye area right here. It doesn't really matter what the rest of the face looks like because it's all going to be covered in white anyway. So we'll take the uh, vibrance down. I don't want to lose too much of the color. And I'll take a uh, saturation down just a touch as well. So I've still got some color in the image. Um, there, you can still see the contour really well and you can tell that her eyes are brown. That's pretty much all I need. I'm going to click OK. Okay, from here I'm going to go over to the quick selection tool and I'm going to choose her face area. Just the face. Uh, maybe we can go a little deeper into the hairline. And then if you press Option on the keyboard or Alt, for PC, uh, then you can remove some of this. So we're going to remove the ear area because we wouldn't normally paint the the ear. So we're just going to remove those from the selection. And I think that looks okay. Um, let me remove this little spot here. Uh, and I'll remember that this is her shoulder right here. So I can come back and select and mask. And you'll see right here where you have that bump. Uh, just keep in mind that that is the shoulder area. I'm going to click on Smart Radius. Bring it up just one, just a touch. Make sure that you're here in the Smart Radius brush. And we're going to brush over her hairline. Now if you get anything in here that you don't want to be here, you can just click on the little uh, minus sign and brush over it again just to get rid of that. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is and I'm going to come back here to output, make sure so, uh, layer mask is selected, click OK. And now we've uh, masked out this area so you can see it's much whiter than her actual skin is. And I'm going to turn on that black and white layer with the Option key held down on your keyboard, Option or Alt key, and then hover right above that uh, top layer. So it's that lighter skin layer. And when you see that arrow, just click. So we're just masking the black and white adjustment layer to this top layer with the mask on it. Uh, we are going to bring in that candy skull. And I have uh, the one that I created already here. 
So you can see uh, this is that candy skull and I just deleted that entire area and added a, a pretty crude looking uh, mouth there but but it does the job so you get these anchors alt key when you see the two double arrows drag it over and you've got that in there now I don't want this part to be black and white so I'm gonna take that out of there and I'm going to release the clipping mask because it automatically added one uh, right now I'm just trying to see where it looks best so I'm gonna take down my opacity to about 60% is fine. I just want to see where it sits on her face. So because this is a mask, it's going to be a little bit different than just face paint, like a mascot or, you know, that type of like a logo or that type of thing, because we need this graphic to sit on her face perfectly. We don't want her nose on this side of her actual nose and we don't want this part cutting into her eyes. So we need to just make sure that we have that positioned properly. So I'm going to zoom in actually. I'm going to come into edit, transform, and I'm going to choose the warp tool and I'm just going to use this to get around her eye area. So I want this positioned with her eyebrow. The same thing with this side. We'll move this over. Make sure that the nose is positioned directly over her nose and her mouth, uh, that area looks pretty good. I'm going to bring this down. Okay, so that looks okay. Um, with these areas right here, don't worry too much about how uh, this is overlapping. Uh, this stuff right here is actually going to be masked out anyway, so go ahead and hit enter when you're happy with uh, the way it's sitting on her face. With this layer selected option on the keyboard, or alt and then clip that layer as well to, to this white face layer. Now we need to come in and mask out her eye area. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to turn that off for a second and then I'm going to click on this. Hit the letter B on the keyboard. Make sure that I have just a white basic hard brush. Okay, make sure that I'm on the mask itself and then I can just come in and paint out these areas. Okay, so now that we have that masked out, I'm going to grab the mask, hold down the option or alt key, and then drag that up here into the black and white adjustment layer. It's going to ask me if I want to replace the layer mask. I'm going to hit yes. Then I can come back up here and I'm going to change the mode here. You can do color burn. It looks kind of faded out and you can see a lot of her, the makeup that she was wearing underneath. So uh, depending on the image that you're working with, you might want to either do color burn or linear burn. For this one, I'm going to use linear burn and I'm going to take that opacity way up because I want it to look like actual paint. You can take your opacity all the way up or leave it down if you want to show more of the skin area. I'm going to take mine all the way up and I'm going to take this layer right here and I'm going to come up to filter and then we're going to go to distort and add that displacement. The uh, contour scale to about five, vertical scale about five, stretch to fit, and then we're going to use repeat edge pixels. Click OK. Use this contour that we made earlier and just add it there. Now I'm going to undo that because I want you to see what it did. It, it's not a big change, but it does make a difference. So I'm going to click on displace. You can see how it's kind of wrapped itself around her contours. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and grab some roses just to give it a finishing touch. So option on the keyboard and I'm going to drag it over to this other image right here. Letter V just to grab that and I'm going to put it over here on the side because you always see these candy skulls with the flowers. Go ahead and add that finishing touch there. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And visit prettywebs.com for more design resources for your blog and business. Until next time, thanks for watching.